Well, we're back out here with JD's car again. And uh, I picked up this C6 here for 500 bucks on Marketplace. And it's got TCI guts in it, and it's fresh. So I'm sure it doesn't work. And that'll go really well be behind the engine that we don't know if it'll work either. I got JD robbing parts off of this uh, truck transmission. We weren't able to use the truck transmission because it has a companion flange on the back. And it's a Ford, so you can't just change you know, a tail shaft simply enough. This was the better way to go. Better than buying a $500 drive shaft. At least we got a brand new transmission for that much money. This thing is definitely brand new inside. As such, it's bone dry. So before we put the torque converter in, we're going to fill it. It probably holds, I don't know, two quarts, three quarts. And we're using Type F in it because that's what you're supposed to use or something. Always fill these up before you install. Let me try to put another one in there. Now, you put a torque converter in. It's got a little bit of a trick to it. Hoist her on up here. Try not to spill its guts like I just did. And I've got one lock. There. Two. You should be able to feel it engage the pump. I did actually miss the last lock. I just got it knocked in all the way. Oh, there we go. Good to go. Well, I'm gonna have JD clean up the flex plate and the flex plate shim block mount thing that Fords have for some reason. And just take some brake clean and maybe scrape it. Might as well clean it up before we, you know, throw it on the shiny new engine and trans, right? Yeah. You know, maybe the dipstick too. It's not too bad. Yeah. I can get you a scraper if you want. Yeah, I like a scraper. Okay, though. ahead and try to marry these two things. Eight out. There. Yeah, maybe it might work in that 440. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is what we will need this for next. Well, we just got to get the tranny on it. If we just swing the end. Look, pull the tire out. And yeah. we'll see how low we can take it down. Uh, maybe if I can just lift the trans up onto it. But we gotta put the uh, flex plate and stuff on first anyway. Yeah. Which way does this go? It's this way. We got our new flex plate bolts here to put on our used flex plate. Oh, also, you have to go find a 12 point socket that'll. I know which way face the engine because the holes are all boogered up from me trying to cut off the bolts from them on the other engine. We're gonna put a little bit of blue Loctite on every one of these, just because I am paranoid. And a little bit of blue Loctite on the threads. We're just gonna hand start them all. I put it on wrong. These holes are not uh, equal, so you gotta turn it until you find, uh, find where they line up. foot-pounds. Now oh, the engine still rolls, that's a good thing. But also kind of a pain in the ass at the moment. Try to hold it as best you can. Okay. One, two, three. All right. Rotate that back to top dead center. Oh. See the mark right here? Yep. Mark, line it up with that pointer. Push. Push. Yeah. Let's pronounce these things engine and trans. See, the cool thing about Fords is not only do you have to line up the transmission, but you have to line up the stupid plate they have too. 
Ford's ingenious plate thing here is rubbing on one of those plugs in the back of here. I don't know if that's like an issue or not. A little more. Oh, oh that's it. I don't think you broke the flex plate. Just took a chunk out of concrete though. Got it halfway close by doing the big no-no, which is uh, you know, suck the bell housing on with a bolt. And uh, you should really never ever do that, ever. Because it will break one day. Never happened to me yet, but this is a Ford, so it might happen today. That's good. That's good. That means we are good. All the way around. Yeah. That's last resort. Only whenever you're working on a Ford do you resort to suck the bell housing on with a bolt. On every other make, there's always soap, but not on. All right. Go ahead and start them. They should all just line up now. Okay. There are like two things I like about this engine. Hmm. I like how it looks. I like FEs are cool looking. FEs are, if it runs, it'll probably be bulletproof. So, I mean, it does have that going for it. The, if it runs, it'll last until the end of time. If it doesn't run, it'll never run. C6 is a really good transmission. Oh, yeah. Very strong transmission. Simple. It is the uh, most parasitic power robbing transmission ever made. So that's good. Power but they, robbing. Yeah, there's a lot of parasitic loss involved with the C6. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Actually, set it back down slow. Okay. We're going to have to put this on the back hook. Otherwise, that thing's going to pick up like oh, standing yeah. up. Okay. Getting this moved to the front is going to be interesting. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, oh, no. We Good probably should have put it all together at the front. We'll find a way. Yeah, we'll figure it out. It's definitely more than a thousand pounds. Really? Yeah. So that's actually over the limit of that hoist. It is? Mm -hmm. oh. In that sitting. One and a half ton. Half ton. Oh, half ton. <laughs> it does two ton. But that would be suck. There, I need it. I can get it. Go on, go on. What? Go fast? I don't want to drag it all over the ground. Well, at least the tranny's dry, so it won't pee all over the place. Yeah. JD likes them M&M &M measuring systems better than America measuring. Nonsense. It no, it's not. It sucks. You know what's smart? Working underneath a thousand pound engine. Yeah, let's see if it falls. I'll die. Your hands will only get crushed. Then I don't have to go to work. Yeah. One, three, go. Uh, give me the the uh, semi-automatic with fifteen sixteenths. Holy crap! Hmm. An engine that rolls over. What? I don't even know what to do. Finally, we got the engine to roll over. Okay. We're good now. It's only been two Scrap minutes. It. Just hold the trance or something. Keep it limbs from underneath it. Ugh. It's got better compression than that other motor. <laughs> That's for sure. You hear it? Did you hear the air in the cylinders yeah. pumping up? That's good. Yeah. That's really good. All right, we're gonna go ahead and throw the starter on it while we got the engine out here. It'll be a little bit easier. we we'll just load them up in the extension and then use the extension like a nut driver to start. One starter installed. Let's see if we can get it in front of your car somehow. Stab it in, I guess. <laughs> Dang wasp. Go oh, away. Get the tennis racket. Yeah. Anyway, the motor mount on this, they can go either way. They can 
forward or back. Don't know which way is correct. I ordered them for a 59 fairway with a 332. We'll see. We may have to pull it back out after we put it in, but it's not the end of the world. We'll, we'll make it work. It'd be cool to get this squared up on the front. Can we move the car back at all? Uh, yeah, we'll go yeah, back yeah, yeah, foot. Go. Let's do that. That's plenty. Still got a little bit more. Now we can go straight in without having to do anything funky, you know? Yeah. Maybe someday we get more of you guys to subscribe and I can buy a new cherry pick. Uh, keep the engine straight. <laughs> this is a big motor. It starts to fall, run. Yeah, I know. Clear? For now, anyway. Come in. And it's probably going to do it. Right. Stop. Okay. Just a little bit. Right. Let me give her a push. Okay. Um, Good? No, no. Um, close. Uh, it's almost into the hole. Once it gets down there, then it'll. It'll do it itself. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Come on, man. Put all your ass into it. More? Um, it's pretty dang close. You can go down about two inches. Okay. Oh my god, be careful. <laughs> as low right. as you can. There you go. Keep her coming. Keep her coming. If we jack it up. We can jack it up now. Because oh. now it's against the tunnel, so it should pivot on the tunnel, right? Yeah. Sure. Just put your hand right here. Oh, almost. Cherry picker's hitting something. Let's hit your tire rod. Yep. Can you move it over just like an inch? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, daddy light. Daddy light. Oh, yeah. It's close. Oh, baby. Oh, she's right there. Put a jack under the back of the trans and level it out a little bit. Looks like it's going to drop. Off. I'm going to lower the engine. You stay where you're at. Okay. Sit on something over here. There we go. Oh, there goes the right, Can you check the stud on this side, on the driver's side? Yep. This one's good. Is that one good? Yep. Right, drop it. <laughs> okay, hang on, hang on, hang on. Let me check this jack back here. Let's just leave it right there for right now. Yeah. And uh, we'll bolt the motor down, then we'll fiddle with the trains. Okay. Uh, I can tell you right now, I don't think those headers are going to work. Oh, yeah, no. Uh, good turbo, man. We're officially bolting an engine in this car for the first time in what, a month? Yep. That's pretty good timing there, uh, pretty good uh, speed on getting an engine done. So I'll leave all the glory of tightening goes down to you because it looks like a pain in the ass. Have fun. Measure the overall width of this. Butcher giant holes and make this wider. I think will work. We should have figured this out before we put it in the car. Uh, I'm 
and see if I eyeballed it right? Yeah. So we were fairly close. We pulled the mount off just to see what it looks like. and It's about one bolt hole off. So we're going to take it one more bolt hole towards the uh, longer of the two sides. Yeah, it's that one. It is this one? Yeah. Okay. So we just got to hog it up towards the driver's side a little bit. So after some extensive reaming, uh, it's fully adjustable now. The problem where the deep sump uh, trans pan that's on this thing is rubbing this cross member. And it's not letting us pull this side all the way forward. You can see where it's been rubbing right here and here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut, well, you know, more than we need out of it. So yeah, we're just going to, we're just going to give ourselves plenty of room. This is going to be fun. So uh, there's our, you know, cut. I'm pretty much a craftsman when it comes to this kind of thing, you know. Anyway, we're going to see if that gives us enough room. And uh, when it doesn't, we'll come up with another plan. <laughs> it's a little while later. The cross member's in. Finally, it was really easy and not completely butchered It missing half of the hardware. It's fine. The car's got a really cool stance now, though. It's really cool. Well, we got good news. It's the next day, and we've been, you know, the last couple days just been fighting this thing tooth and nail, but we finally caught ourselves a break. This is the original drive shaft out of this car, and it goes, it's the exact same length uh, with the C6 as the three speed, which is awesome. Uh, that saves us big bucks right there and, and some pain. So the only thing is the splines are different on here. A uh, C6 uses a 31 spline output, and this is less than that for sure. So all we're gonna do is measure how long this is. It's four inches, give or take. And we're just gonna order a C6 yoke that is four inches long or so. I mean, even the wear mark lined right up where it was going. So this is gonna work for sure. That's a big break we caught there. Well, I'm gonna try to fit these, uh, you know, mystery headers on. And uh, I'm sure that's gonna be absolutely no problem at all. I'm gonna go in from underneath. Try to slip them up that way. <laughs> to put it nicely, there's not one chance in hell that these are going to work. So it looks like I'm on the hunt for some exhaust manifolds. The headers do not work, but the truck manifolds off of that brown truck they just fit no problem. It's a rear exit, it just shoots right out the back, so it's gonna be horribly restrictive and make no power. Eh, but you know, it's not gonna make any power anyway, so it doesn't really matter. And the uh, driver's side fits no problem at all, which is pretty good because we were looking at uh, headers on eBay, and like, or uh, manifolds on eBay, they're like 300 bucks. Uh, I've had a used pair for 300 bucks and there's nothing local and there are no junkyards around here so uh this is what we're working with but i think it'll work just fine i say we clean them up and then toss them on what we're gonna do next uh before we run out of time here is I'm gonna go ahead and prime the engine. I'm gonna hook up an oil pressure gauge and to try to prime the engine. Uh, and then JD is going to install the exhaust manifolds. 
using our senior gaskets here and uh, these are factory style so you just put the bottom bolts in and you know put the manifold on put the bottom bolts in and just slide them right on The oil pump in a Ford is a quarter inch hex, which means the socket won't work. So what I'll do, well, what I thought I would do is put that in the end of my drill, but it won't fit. So I'm going to put that in the end of my drill, and then I'm just going to use a quarter inch socket. And because I'm paranoid, I'm going to put some duct tape around this socket to hopefully keep it from falling inside of the engine. And if it does fall inside of the engine, then we're just going to pretend that that never happened and move on with our lives. All right, you guys tell me when it starts to build some pressure. Let's say the other way. There it goes. Woo! 80 pounds of oil pressure. Hey, pop that breather off so you can see oil shooting up inside of there. I can see some oil. So I'm going to do this for about five minutes and make sure we pre-lube every. Oh, she's erling all right. Oh, yeah. I'm going to go ahead and stab the dizzy back in. I'm going to shoot for our number one mark, which I pretty much had is straight forward on here. Our contact point, something like that. Put a little bit of lube on this gasket or seal or o-ring or whatever you call it on a Ford for the... Uh, distributor because it was a little tight going in there so we're just gonna make it a little slippy slip slippery slippy slippery I don't believe that that is engaging well I gotta bump this oil pump drive shaft a little bit one way or the other to try to get that distributor seated all the way there we go now she's seated down in there. So we're going to go ahead and wire up the dizzy here. Uh, they claim it to be idiot proof, so let's go ahead and put that to the test. And looks like we just need this little auxiliary harness. Just plugs into this weather pack connector right here. The gray wire sitting off by its lonesome here is the tack feed, so you might as well go ahead and plug that in and get that ran inside the car because JD is a he is gonna have a tack. What? Why is that like that? Destructions. Tell me what to do. Uh, oh, uh, programming switch. Oh, for a rev limiter. Hmm. Do we need a rev limiter? Yes. We need to set the rev limiter at 2,000 RPM so it never blows up. <laughs> Here's what I got going on here is I just cut all the wires a little shorter and you got to ground one end of it and one of these goes to the positive, one goes to the negative side of the coil and uh, that's it. Then you just run your tack back to the car with this one. Easy peasy. I know you probably don't want to cut up the harness of a $600 distributor, but this makes it look so much gooder. Are you done yet? Almost. We're losing the shop as we speak. I really hope we don't lose the shop. Always use heat shrink connectors when you do stuff, if you can, please. That just makes a hell of a lot better of a seal. And since I can't afford good connectors, these are a good compromise. Orange is going to go to the negative on the coil. And red is going to go to the positive. And that's as easy as it gets right there, fellas. JD had to split, but I think I'm going to keep on working on this thing. And I don't know. See if uh, see what kind of progress we can make here. Oh, uh oh, oh, that fell into the unretrievable pit. I have retrieved it. It was a hard journey to get there, but I did. Now you can see that exhaust manifold JD got stuck on there. Uh, it's weird how that comes out, but we'll be able to make it work. If we just whoop, drop it down, or you know write a check and pay someone to drop it down because uh, I, I don't have that capability. Still got to throw the other manifold on here. Uh, 
I'll probably just go ahead and do that. Well, I'm going to pick up right where we left off on JD's car here. I'm on my own for the moment, but I'd sure like to get this thing fired up for him. I think that'd be pretty neat. I'm going to go ahead and hook up the fuel line to the carb up here because, well, it's already here. And easy makes it good. So, what I got going on here is a cheapy, cheapy fuel filter, but not a glass one. So, you know, not super deadly. And to minimize the amount of rubber hose we use, I'm just going to put it right in line there. And I don't like to use too much if I can avoid it. So, always a good idea to limit your use of rubber hose as much as possible. Now there's one, you know, minor step done. It's chrome for extra performance. I'm just going to go ahead and hook the heater hoses up because we need to. And rather than Teflon tape, I actually like to use thread seal on things. And it's a little messier, but it works really good. So we're just going to thread that into the intake, and that's going to give us... I, I had the temp sender ran to the wrong spot, so I had to move it behind the distributor here and then put the temp sender there. Live and learn when it comes to Ford. Snug that in there. Then, when you're done, the prudent mechanic will wipe off the excess thread seal from around it leaving a factory appearing. I had to engage convertible mode on my shirt here because, man, it's sticky out here. We got enough heater hose here to do the job from what was on the car already because it was new. And I hate to waste money if I don't have to. You know? And it's got plenty as well, so we're in good shape there. Saved a couple bucks on reusing the heater hoses. You know, that's probably really supposed to be a 90, isn't it? It's probably supposed to shoot in the side. No, well, I already bought it. No going back now. Okay, one more thing we need is a ground cable for the battery. I don't see any real likely suspects here except for this front intake bolt, but that should do the trick. The good thing about once you get to this point of a build is there's no right or wrong way to proceed. You can do things in pretty much whatever order you want to. So if you want to tackle some of the uh, low-hanging fruit first, you can. If you want to jump in, do the hard stuff, you can. And for my next trick, I've got a GM alternator stuck on here. And it actually works reasonably well uh, with this random belt I found. But the water pump pulley is loose. I need to tighten it up to make sure we're straight here. So I tossed the radiator in it. And I'd like to see what we can do for a fan here, because uh, I don't have an electric fan handy. I could go to the junkyard and go grab one, but rather work with what I got. Well, I got the fan getting rebuilt right now. But I'm kind of wondering, I know you can buy these in different lengths. I'm kind of wondering if I couldn't just, you know, I only need half an half of an inch. Hey, why couldn't I just chop that down and make a spacer? Well, I kind of eyeballed how much I want. Holy crap, that's hot! Here's that much. I do know we'll have to hog that middle of that out to well, whatever size this is. So let's find a drill bit that's about that size. And we just gotta chamfer this hole to fit over the end of the water pump. This big old honking thing here, surely it'll drill aluminum. There we go. Look at that, should have been a machinist. Uh, this is not strong, by the way, so I'm sure it'll be fine. What could possibly go wrong? Check out the action on that baby. Had to get some longer bolts probably, but I think it'll work. So yeah, with the fan in here, I don't think it's straight, but you know, whatever. They hardly ever are, right? Let's throw the radiator in. Make sure it fits. That came with the car. Uh, years what three years ago now we bought it uh, that came with it uh, for a v8 swap and at the time we were like oh no we're gonna run the six and uh you know we all know the story on that we finally used the radiator but that one inch is gonna do the trick for us i guess don't look, don't read into that is when things just are like hmm seem a little wrong 
Uh, just never happened. Got it? Smell? Are you smelling what I'm cooking? Well, to wire up our coil, this had one of them, you know, uh, ceramic resistor block things. And power comes in one side of this, runs through that spring, and it turns 12 volts down to about 9.6 volts while the car is running. Uh, and that's to keep points from burning up. And uh, so uh, yeah. I'm going to figure out which one of these wires is the 12 volt side, which should, should be this one right here. But I want to make sure it has 12 volts with the key on just to verify. And uh, that's all we got to do. We'll just run right out of it, right up to the coil, and boom, we're wired. One of these should have power on it. I'm thinking it's probably this one. Because there's going to, actually no, it'll be the single one by itself. The other one will only have 12 volts while it's cranking. And it's got a whole lot of nothing. What am I missing here? Let's see if we got other things like headlights and stuff. No. What did I do? Oh, here it is. Over here. That's right. So, here's the main body harness over here. We're going to have to run that. Uh, this over here, this ring terminal needs power. And I don't remember what the rest of this crap was for. Probably should have paid some sort of attention <laughs> to that. Uh, so these two wires here, this red and this brown, was coming out of the voltage regulator originally. And both of them need to go to source power all the time, I guess. But I noticed if I, if I touch them now, we got headlights and stuff. So problem solved. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and wire the alternator up, I guess. Uh, we just gotta bring these either over to the alternator or over to the battery side of the starter solenoid. Either way. I'm gonna go ahead and knock that out real quick. You've seen enough wiring lately. I'm gonna knock that out and uh, then we'll get back to trying to wire the coil. got some powers up here and check and 12 volts with the key on so that's good I'm gonna get under there and hook up the starter and I just need to run this fuel line around the back and up here to the fuel pump and, uh, and that's about it and tighten this belt and then make some plug wires and we're ready to fire well while fooling around trying to get the alternator on I realized that the uh, bottom bolt in that alternator is actually a 7 16 thread bolt and not a 3 8 bolt so I gotta hog out the bottom hole on this to a bigger size which is surprisingly difficult considering it's aluminum there we go Let's see if it fits there we go well, that big old honking sucker will fit right in Try to get this starter cable on and try to wrap this cable somewhere where it doesn't burst into flames would be nice. Um, I don't know how likely that is, but I think a couple of zip ties will ensure our success. A couple of our zip ties. The Walmart variety today. Right over the cross member here. All I gotta do is turn into a contortionist temporarily. Take our newly modified holder downer thingy here and attach it to hold this cable up out of the way. Crimp it. Good to go. Well, we've been defeated by China. This is the fuel pump off of it. And I failed to realize this, but uh, look in there. There's no flare. There's no cup. So what What is that? Is it pipe thread? Because my pipe thread fittings don't thread into it. But my fuel lines thread into it, but there's nothing for the flare to bottom out against, so they don't tighten. And there's no room. Like, you put this on here, and the inlet just runs right into the oil filter housing. It's complete garbage. Uh, literally cannot even use it. So, 
Don't buy that. Be smarter than me. Time to make some plug wires. Now, I already made the coil wire. And I'll show you how to do one. And then I'm just going to blaze on through these. Now, I did have to look up what the hell the firing order is on a Ford. Because I do not know that offhand. And so I looked it up. And they rotate counterclockwise. And one, five, four, two, six, three, seven, eight. JD picked out these red Excel wires, Excel Super Stocks. Uh, we're going to start with number one, which is probably our shortest run. So you want to make sure you, you're picking, you know, because they are different lengths. So uh, for a short one, you're going to want to pick one of the shorter ones in the bunch here. And they all come with one like super gargantuan giant mega long one. Save that one for last. The point of making wires is to, you know, do a good job, a neat job of it. And, uh, you know, so we're, we're going to actually put a little effort in here and try to make them look good. So this one is actually pretty close to what we need right out of the, right out of the gate. So I'm just going to cut off a little bit off the end. So there's actual tools for this kind of thing that I do not use mostly out of ignorance and basically what I do is just take a razor blade and very carefully cut the sheathing around the wire you do not want to cut the core uh, you can cut the insulation and it'll be all right but you do not want to cut that black core inside slowly work your way around it till you can pull it off like that it should come off nice and clean the strands aren't really going to hurt anything but I like to clean them out of the way anyway never had any problems they tell you not to do that but I've never had an issue so I'm going to bend the wire the core of the wire I'm just going to bend it over backwards and a little extra ain't going to hurt nobody so I, I leave them a little bit long a lot of times just fine that boot will insulate it roll it over like that and then I just take a pair of pliers to it give it a pinch on the sides to Hold it on to the silicone jacket a little bit. Start rolling the, the, and the crimp connector there onto the wire. And I put it in the jaws of the pliers and just squeeze. And then I squeeze on the sides to make it round again. That's as good of a crimp as, I mean, anything else. And they always come with this kind of snot stuff here. Some kind of grease or jelly or something and you just put a little bit on your terminal here grab a boot make sure you line the boot up you know you want the open you know the clickety click snap snap side lined up with the boot and it should just slide right over it of course this one's gonna fight me maybe i can Wiggle a screwdriver up in here to help pull it through. Yeah, it's got some extra material inside the boot. It's not letting it come through. There. Now we're set. And I'm just going to snap it on. Boom. One down, seven to go. Yeah, well, the plug wires are done. I just got off alive with Bear Rose Garage. I jumped on that just for kicks, and they said I ought to try to start this thing on the live, and so I did. I tried, and uh, here's a brand new Wilson starter from O'Reilly, and it's bad. I even jumped it on the live, and it just kind of, I mean, it's shot. I put the old starter back on it, which is also shot, but it kind of has an excuse. I'm not going to hold that against it. Huh. Well, it's got plug wires. You see them. They look cool. So I guess I've, I've been doing my zip tie wire looms here. You know, put three zip ties in between the wires. You put one around them and then a zip tie in between each one. 
and make your looms that way. Makes for a pretty nice looking set of wires. I guess I'll go ahead and finish that up and then uh I guess I'll call it a night. I mean there's still a few things to do, but not that much. I guess we can write it down and see and try to see what we really need. The chalkboard of doom. Trans lines, rad hoses, rad, what else? Trans cooler starter again. Fuel pump again. Starter solenoid. Drive shaft? That's about all I can think of right now. Oh, throttle linkage. Ooh. In linkage. There's our fancy wire looms all made up. And once I get the little clips that go on the valve covers, we'll be able to really tie them up nice. But at least they're decent looking for now. There's one installed radiator. And at least I can go to bed feeling like I actually did something now. Good lord, what a cluster. Now I'm back out here today, and the good lord has seen fit to put the, the earth on broil today, so the heat is up to 11. And we'll see how long it lasts. But I got a new starter, I got a new solenoid, and I got a new fuel pump, the proper kind of fuel pump. So I'm going to toss this stuff on. Then I guess we'll see if it'll fire up. All right, just so you guys know, I'm not crazy. I'm grounding. This is the brand new starter I just picked up. Got it grounded, right? Right? Look at that. Nothing. Nothing. It's dead. What the? God, I, so I beat on the original starter over there, and it started spinning. So let's try it. Holy crap, it started! <laughs> it worked! It doesn't sound very good, but it worked! <laughs> Damn, she just kicked right off, didn't she? Let's see if we can get it to really kick off. Well, I hope it doesn't backfire. We're all going up in flames. I, I think that starter is still bad, but you heard it. it. It barked, right? I mean, it ran, so that's good, right? JD's back here, and we're going to try to route the trans cooler lines together so it doesn't bloodbath all over the place. Then we picked up a trans cooler and a roll of 3 8 tubing here. And we're going to use that to make a fuel line and to finish up those training lines. And then we'll just mount the trans cooler right in front here. And hopefully it'll run, run. We did get it to bark off again a little bit. I think it'll run. So let's find out. Here's what we got going on here. Running through a hole in the core support. Just running all the way back to the tranny. And now we can go ahead... Now we can go ahead and put our... Huh, no, no, no. Oh, I got a piece of them. Oh. Anyway, we're going to go ahead and put our trans cooler on. And we're just going to hook up a couple of hoses here. We'll stick it to the front of the radiator here. These kind of coolers always come with a little mounting kit. You just stick these through the radiator and then stick one of these guys on the back side and that's all there is to it. Ta-da! Looks nice. Yeah. That is the stall. Cool. It's good with the rubber lines up now. And there's that all hooked up. We can put training fluid in it now. You know, I just got our fuel line ran in here. Not crazy about how I had to do it, but well, that was pretty much the only option we had. One more thing I'd like to do is put the modulator valve line on it. And the way I'm going to do that is a trick my dad showed me, and that's just to use some brake line. 
because you got to run all the way back there. You don't want to be running a piece of rubber all the way back there. And I don't have, uh, obviously it was a manual transmission car, so it doesn't have, didn't have one ever. So we'll just make one out of this piece of easy, flexible brake line here. And we're going to start down at the transmission and fish it on up. You can put all the bins you need to in it and then just use a couple little pieces to hook up the ends of it and you're good to go. Modulator valve lines ran up here and hooked up. We'll tie all that up neater in a little bit. So uh, let's go ahead and fill it up with tranny fluid. Uh, that way when we're cranking on it and getting it started and stuff, we don't end up burning up what hopefully is a good transmission. Fill her up. Drink up, baby. You're going to need it. We're just going to dump about, I don't know, maybe three quarts in, including what was in the torque converter. That should, uh, that should give it something to eat on a little bit. He did make this battery tray when he was about nine. It works pretty good, actually. And he did secure it with self-tapping screws. I don't know where he would have learned such a thing, but probably the internet. There's the thing. Is that battery tray good? No, not really. Is it uh, strong or help? Is it even really gonna work? It will work, but uh, but here's the thing, guys. He made that by himself. So who am I to change that out or try to make it better? He's gonna leave that. He should be proud of that. I think I will dust a little paint on it for him, though. For throttle linkage, I got the original linkage here. Right now, that thing is floored, right? So we need some adjustment. So let's do it. Oh, cut it a little past. Let's do it like right there. Fiddling with trying to get some throttle linkage figured out here. And so what I did, I was going to thread that rod, but this is apparently uh, some unusual size. I couldn't get it. I didn't have a tap that would fit it. So I got this piece of what I think is steel brake line. And I'm going to use that as a sleeve to make my throttle linkage. And I'll just run a tack on either end of that. And it should be fine. That's my idea anyway. I don't know which one of these holes I'm going to shoot for, but I might make this just a little bit shorter. Grind it and paint it, you know, so uh, I can feel better about myself. There you go. Put a spray a little paint on there before we put it on, but uh, that should get the job done. And we still got plenty of adjustability, adjust adjustment there. Well, I was just trying to put a radiator hose on the thing, and uh, I just realized that this thing's got a big old honking water neck on it uh, from the big truck it was in. Now the lower one looks okay, it looks the same size as the radiator, but uh, that upper one's got to go. So I robbed the one off the old parts engine there and uh, got it painting or drying right now. So I'm going to pop this one off and uh, then we'll go ahead and swap those out and then we should be able to put at least an upper radiator hose on it. It's the old water neck. That thing's got more iron in it than a Toyota Prius. Well, our home grown throttle linkage worked out pretty good. Well, let's get our new non-gigantor water neck. Ready to pop in there and put on our new gasket from Senor Gasket. And if I remember correctly, you load the thermostat in first, although that doesn't look like it fits in there. Huh, it doesn't. They take a different thermostat. I will be back. Thermostat out of the uh, motor this came out of broke. So what I'm going to do is use this gutted thermostat I had laying around just for the time being. We can go back and put one in it later, but for summertime, we don't really need it. But I just, it's a gutted thermostat. You don't want to just run it wide open. You need a little bit of a restriction in there. So gutting them out is the dirt track racer's way of doing it anyway. Hopefully it just kicks right off, right?
sounds horrible. But, I don't know, that's some kind of tuning thing. I didn't hear it knocking or anything. That's good, it smokes. But, some of that's to be expected. So I'm not, like, super concerned about that. Uh, it's leaking gas everywhere. Hmm. I should probably do something about that quickly. But it ran, on its own, even. Pretty cool. Uh, I'm not sure what the misfire is all about. I wonder if I got something flipped around in the firing order. Well, we're back out here tonight, and uh, JD's going to fill this thing up with water. got the hoses on it. And I'm going to try to press a new yoke into the drive shaft. And uh, hopefully, if we can rig up a shifter as well, we can actually go drive this thing. Our first step here is just going to be to get this old yoke off. Oh, this is going too easy. So hopefully I guessed right, and this is a 1310 U-joint, otherwise we'll be waiting on U-joints. Went ahead and got a Neapco U-joint, because they're made in the States. A good quality U-joint. I can already tell it is the wrong one. Yep. Uh, so, yeah. so, of course, it's not a 1310. I don't know what it is. It's some kind of strange, Ford-specific, unknown view joint. Because why would they just use what everybody else used? <laughs> That's a better idea. I don't know what this is. I'm going to do some research and try to figure it out. It doesn't show up anywhere. Nothing shows up. Everything says, oh, it's a 1310. It's not a 1310. It doesn't measure a 1310. The caps are one inch in diameter. That doesn't show up with anything that is 2.8 inches wide. I don't know. So things have escalated. That is the first drive shaft I bought for the Holy Goat. And it was new. It is brand new. It was too long for it. It is one inch shorter than the original drive shaft for this car that we thought would work. The yoke is half an inch longer and the transmission is about an eighth of an inch longer. Pretty close. I put it in. It doesn't engage like as far as I like to, but it engages about two and a quarter inches, which is okay. It's got two and a half inches of slip in it, which is a little much, but it'll work. But even like this car, even a V8 version of this car just takes a 1310. I don't know what it is. In fact, I looked that up and it came up with some kind of John Deere manure spreader joint or something. I don't know. Maybe Gomer Pyle engineered a new piece of drill pipe and a tractor yoke or something and I don't know what the hell Gomer did. Well, after quite the uh, kerfuffle, we got a drive shaft in here. Will it work? Well, it's anybody's guess, I suppose. Anyway, now we're going to fire the car up and uh, try to let it break in a little bit. Now it's got coolant in it, burp cooling system, keep an eye out for leaks and I don't know, just kind of overall give her a once-over. All right, we're going to fire this thing up. Got my timing light set up. Got a couple, of course, of transmission fluids staged. Uh, I'd like to set the timing. Before we do that, I'm going to crank the idle up to, you know, what I earball about 2,000 RPM. Leave it there for just a few minutes to kind of help that cam out. Uh, I don't think it needs it, but you know, can't hurt. Save simultaneously, we're going to be burping the cooling system. We're going to be keeping an eye on the temperature, We're going to be timing it, training fluid, and just making sure it don't blow up.
Ah. Oh. Yeah, that's pouring right out of the front pump. Um, I was really hoping we'd be driving it tomorrow, and I guess we'll see what it looks like in the morning. But, uh, it doesn't look like we're going to be driving it, unfortunately. Which is a damn shame, because that motor sounds good, and it doesn't even smoke. That part, what we did, sounds good. We rebuilt that. You did a good job, because it, it works. It works fine. The starter's junk. You gotta do one of those coming, though. Mm, and but that's the old one. Yeah, that's the original one off of it. We're back out here the next day. JD's gonna crawl under there, pull the inspection cover off the trans, and make sure that we didn't, maybe we didn't get the torque converter seated or it slid out or something. Well, I don't see how this can't be seated. I d it has studs on it. It's bolted in place. How can it not be seated? I don't know. I don't get it. Okay, we're going to make sure that that pump is pumping just by popping this off. And if there's no fluid in here, that will also be a pretty good indication that the pump is garbage. Well, now we think the pump is smoked in that trans or the torque converter's wrong, or something got messed up on install. Something made it work and pump all the fluid out of the bottom of it. We're gonna yank it back out of there. And start over. <laughs> this is how working on cars goes. Four steps forward, and ten steps back. All right, you ready to bust on it? Uh. Let's just get this son of a bitch out of here. Then we'll just see what we got, all right? Okay. We're just gonna bust off. Need some motivation. I have a type. Bum! Bum, bum, bum! Inside of this bell housing is full of chunks of metal, which I'm sure is nothing to worry about. Let's see. Oh, yep. Huh. Metal coming right out of the pump. Dude, what on earth happened to this thing? What is that? Is that the. <laughs> I don't know. That came out of there. It had to have. Yeah. But what? Isn't that. I'm going to guess it's supposed to be in there. Yeah, I'm guessing it's supposed to be in there and not. There? Dude, it's covered in metal and ripped and destroyed everything. Here, show them the chunks. <laughs> we just ripped the front pump out of this old trance. And I didn't video it because I figured it'd be a debacle. And it was. We could try to swap that into the new, the new trance. But the guys that built that trance offered to do it for me. And, uh... I'm definitely not a transmission guy. That takes a delicate touch. And well, I'm not. They say I didn't seat the torque converter. I don't know if I did or not. That's where we're at right now. And uh, I guess I'll let you know uh, how this plays out. <clears throat> Waiting to hear back from them. All right, we're going to go to Nichols Performance Transmission in Grain Valley, Missouri, where they offer to, you know, fix this. Sometimes you just screw things up, JD, and it's best to just own it. Turn on your air conditioning, boy. Well, here at Nichols Performance Transmission, and uh, I'm just going to dump this, you know, in front of his door, and hope it's here on Monday. Here's more or less the game plan. I am really sorry about how spotty uh, some of this has been, kind of jumping around, uh, because we were really just trying to get this, we were really just trying to get this thing knocked out, and you know, be able to go drive it. That was what I was really hoping to focus this video on. And it, it just didn't play out that way, and that's just how it works sometimes. Anyway, 
old boy's going to be working on the trans for us. And, uh, boy, we really appreciate Nichols' performance transmission. Uh, I offered to pay him. He didn't even want paid. Uh, so I tell you what, he's a good guy. No doubt about it. And especially because I didn't even buy the transmission. You know what I mean? It came from him. He built it. But I didn't even buy it. And yet he still is, you know, you know, I'll help you out. And after pulling that pump out of that other trance, I'm like, no, I don't. Don't really don't want to do that. But man, we knocked out some good stuff. I mean, it runs. It runs good. It it will work. You're gonna see it next time. But what we're gonna jump into now, and in the next video on this car, is body and paint. We are going to paint this car using farm and industrial paint for a couple hundred bucks. All said and done, and we're gonna make it look sharp. That's coming your way next. That's what we're going to be working on. Uh, and then hopefully, maybe we get done with that. And then we got a transmission to put in the car. And it all is just kumbaya. But, well, we, I think we can all guess how that's going to work out. Anyway, guys, JD went to bed or he'd be out here with me. Remember to hit that like, hit that subscribe and all that stuff. And, uh... It really helps me out. Uh, it helps the channel out. It helps me be able to keep producing content uh, when you do that. If you hit the bell, that's even better. That's very important. to the, See, here's why. I'm just going to tell you why you need to hit the bell. Um, and it's not so that you get the notifications or, or whatever, really. It's because that's what YouTube's algorithm looks at. And they like to see if people are hitting that bell, that means they want to see the content, right? If people are hitting the like, that means they're interacting. If you comment down below, that really helps it out. I don't care what you say, but that actually makes a big difference. Um, so if you guys could help me out with any of that stuff, I'd seriously appreciate it. Uh, again... Doesn't put any money in my pocket, but it helps me stick around. That's all I got for you guys. We'll see you next time when we'll be sanding and mudding and painting.